Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the chess problem that was mentioned on the WAN show from Linus Tech Tips last Friday. I'm just going to give you a bit of background on that. But firstly, if you don't know, my name's James. I'm a product design engineer and I want to give a possible solution for this problem. But here's the background. So have we talked about the fail pen? Did they tell you about the uh, the chess problem that they ran into with it? Okay, hit me. And I, I overheard Dan talking about it and I was like, yeah, it's all and any of us can think about it. So it has that J on the back side of it, right? Where you uh, where you kind of flick the the locking mechanism. Yeah. Machining that in the bolt real action. Yeah, bolt action. Machining that in the real world, absolutely. I don't know for sure, but what I understand from their explanation and what somebody helpfully mentioned on the Linus Tech Tips forum is that there is a product, a similar product that we can use as a reference, and that is a pen and it has this sort of bolt action J cut out in a cylinder tube. So I assume that's what they're talking about. Absolutely trivial. Modeling that in SOLIDWORKS has stumped your entire engineering team, myself, a friend of mine who is a manufacturing engineer, and now his friends. And so this, this little tiny problem of how to properly 3D model a J is going around our engineering circles, making it super easy, programming it to be visually exact how it comes across in the real world is like, we know how to do it. That's why it's a chess problem. It's like a theoretical problem. Why does that make sense? I think I understand the problem here. Uh, what I imagine is that they want to, what I imagine is that they want to make this represented in CAD and that it actually is quite easy to manufacture because if you have a CNC, which is a four axis CNC, uh, you can basically put it in like a lathe chuck and you can rotate it while also moving a, a milling bit to make the recess and then turn the cylinder as it goes around the J. So at first I thought this should be pretty easy to model. Yes, yeah, he's right. The more you think about it, the more complex it is. But I think I have a solution for it. If I go over to SOLIDWORKS here, this is one example. And I think just to preface, this isn't what I would say is the correct answer. I think this is what is the default go-to answer. So basically what I have here is a extruded tube. The instinct is to put a, f a plane on the front of the tube and then draw this J shape on that plane and then wrap that around the tube. And then you can sort of recess that into the tube. And that's what I've done here. So if we look at this, it's actually wrapped that drawing around the tube and cut out the shape. And yeah, the instinct is to think, okay, well that's done, but it's not done. And I'm sure that they've recognized that obviously. And that's why this is the chess problem. Because if you look at it from a section view, and if we look from the top, you can see that it's cutting on an angle. Now this would be a milling bit, which is coming through straight from this direction. So it wouldn't cut angles like this. There would be straight lines. That's the problem. How do you do that? And in this case, you can see if I scroll down, uh, I've put in a little model to represent a milling bit. And if I click on it, you can see there are parts here where it's highlighted, where it's overlapping. So actually the milling bit wouldn't fit through this channel. What you can do is actually make a swept cut using this part, but this line is not the type of path that will, that SOLIDWORKS will let you sweep a body along. Um, it has a problem with this and this line being tangent. Technically they should be tangent, but it just doesn't recognize them as being tangent. So you can't do a swept body. So I'm going to show you what I tried second. Here I did a wrap without cutting, but just to put a line on the surface to represent the J. And then I did a swept cut using a shape like this. So this shape represents the milling bit. And in this swept cut, you can select that the path should, the path's profile should be tangent to adjacent faces. So it should stay tangent to this face because the milling bit would always be tangent to this face uh, in a four axis milling machine. That looks pretty good, but it's not perfect. And I'm not exactly sure why, but if we put in our fake milling bit again, you can see that there is still some overlap for some reason. If we look from the top, it does look like the lines are straight. And from, from the top they are, 
there is just some strange anomaly when it turns the corner. And I think that's related to just the way that the profile shifts as it follows this path. As an engineer and an partially OCD engineer myself, I could understand the frustration with this. This also isn't perfect because yeah, it really doesn't represent the path that this tool would cut. So on the last example, I think I've got it pretty close. So what I did here is I started with the cylinder and I did the wrap again so that we have the J on the face and I turned that J into a 3D sketch. And then instead of extruding a cut, I extruded a surface. Sorry, instead of sweeping a cut, I swept a surface. You can see in the feature that this swept surface is also tangent to adjacent faces. What I've done after that is I offset the surface in both directions and I lofted between, and if I hide this middle one, you can see it sort of becomes a box and that box represents the cutting path of the milling bit. And if I knit that together, then that can be used to subtract from this model. And what I did also is I did a full round fillet at both ends so that it represents the round, roundness of the milling bit. And then just use the subtract feature from combine. And this looks fairly similar to how the last example looked, but if I put in these example cutting bits, uh, you can see that there aren't any sections where it's overlapping. And I don't know if this is a graphical glitch. It looks like maybe there is a gap there, but I think this is probably a safer bet that this is accurate than the last one is. Not sure still if it's 100% accurate. Ideally, it would be great if we could just sweep the bodies along this kind of path. Unfortunately, SOLIDWORKS doesn't make that completely possible. But I think this is the answer that should satisfy your 3D model. One thing I forgot to mention is if you don't want to give this J a random width and you want to actually constrain it to an angle around this circle, you could add that angle in to the top sketch. So if I add, say I want it to go to 90 degrees, if I add an arc in here and then add a straight line here, I could select this arc and make it equal to this. Then I could go to my wrap sketch and I can show my top sketch. I can make this driven and align this line to this point. So now that radius is not four anymore, it's 3.93. And if I cut that out, then this slot here actually lines up with this angular definition. Yeah, so that was just a little experiment I did last night after watching the episode. Hope that maybe it's helpful. Maybe you guys have already solved it. I don't know. Yeah, if you liked it, you can check out some of my other videos. I do a lot of videos about SOLIDWORKS and I'm working on a design project at the moment. I also um, <laughs> was going to apply for the job in at LTT and I missed it. Uh, and I'm also Australian, so it's not ideal. But if you ever want a contractor, then hit me up. Or if you ever want to collab, but yeah, I understand if you don't want to because I have 260 followers. So <laughs> regardless, thanks for watching and see you later.